a fish room in your bedroom though. yeah and which is kind of a thing right it's, it's a little bit weird to be like i have a bunch of tanks in my room yeah i'll wake up in the bed and, and kind of squint and it's like if i don't see blue light i know it's like oh I'll close your eyes i got still a few good, yeah. i still got a few more minutes i've got a flu vial alarm clock <laughs> it's a very expensive alarm clock it is so we've got some little endlers in there and uh -huh. then there are some shell dwellers oh so. wow well and with this many tanks i've got multiple kinds of fish herpes <laughs> welcome back to the aquarium library today we're with brandon one of the fellow fish keepers in my city and today he's gonna be showing us around his fish room, other fish tanks, fish wall, um, and I'll turn it over to him. I've been uh, in the aquarium hobby for most of my life, like 30 years now. Um, started off when I was a kid, uh, inherited my uh, sister's guppies and tetras and stuff like that when she got tired of them. And, uh, Very typical. Yeah, yeah, and, and 30 years later, it's still, it's still guppies and tetras. It's kind of been my staple. I, I like little planted tanks and, and smaller fish that, you know, I can kind of, uh, I have a, a compulsion problem where you, you, you want to get them all. You see one and you want you Right, know, right. And so, uh, yeah, so yeah, lots of, lots of small tanks with lots of small fish. That's the way to do it. Yeah. So I think one of the coolest things about your fish room is your racking system. So could you tell us a little bit about like how you set up your racking system before we get into all the tanks and whatnot? Like how do you actually set up all of these tanks that we have here and how hard is it to actually set up? Sure. Um, I, I can't take credit really. I, I stole the idea from a very popular YouTuber. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure if I should mention, uh, you mention names. Uh, Aquarium Co-op's okay. uh, guide from probably five or six years yeah, ago. He, yeah, Corey, Corey made a guide back several years ago where he does his style. Um, he uses 10 foot boards mm -hmm. and on those he can get two 55s side mm -hmm. by side or he can get uh, four uh, 20 highs okay. to a row. Right. Um, so that was kind of my base that I started from. Um, he also uses uh, the standard, mm -hmm. uh, standard like, six inch cinder blocks. Yeah, yeah. Cinder blocks. And um, so I knew I had a, a certain, my, my width is pretty fixed here. There's a fireplace and a, uh -huh. and a mantle over here. There's a wall down on that gotcha. end. Um, and so I knew that that was my, my maximum length. And so what I did was went and got uh, 12 foot boards okay. and cut them to length. They're actually 11 foot four inches. Okay. Um, and then rather than having uh, just the two supports in the end and one support in the middle, which is what Corey typically right, does, yeah. I went ahead and did four supports since I was, had the bigger span in the middle there. Uh -huh. um, so I, what, his are all uniformly dispersed. The weight is evenly dispersed. Right. And so in that regard, I, I would assume that I've lost some structural strength right. um, or I've given up some with this big gap here right. in the middle. Um, but... I, I, it was just a, a design choice or aesthetic choice at that point. Um, I had the bigger tank already and uh, thought, well, I'll uh, stick that one in the middle and kind of frame, frame around it. Yeah. yeah. So is that why you don't have anything in the center part right here? Was yes, of then? it is. Uh, I don't know if you notice uh, the, the two tanks that are on the top here are oh. kind of skewed to the outside so that as much of their weight as possible is sitting so, on this post. Yep, gotcha. um, Initially, I thought, well, I can throw a plant or, you know, a little mm -hmm. gro growing bowl or right, something like yeah. that here in the middle, and I, I haven't got there yet. Gotcha. Um, and uh, I guess initially the thought process, well, someday I'll find me like a, um, like a 70 or 90 tall right, or something like that to, that'll space. fill up the yep. space more. Um, sometimes I go back and forth whether I want to do that or like put lights up underneath and come up out of the top mm -hmm. of the tank, uh, kind of paludarium style. Yeah. Um, That'd be really cool. I know that, that your upstairs tank has that, which we'll see a little bit later on. The right, and so that, that, like, the, that's kind of what slowed me down, honestly. Uh, I got the idea, I got the, um, the, the, the creative uh, urge to do it, and then I did it in another tank. And, and it's like, the juice and it's right, like, it's like, okay, well, I took, I took some of my big pieces of wood uh, and I put those in there, and so it's yeah. like, now it's like, all right, I, I'll, uh, I'll come back to it eventually. But gotcha. yeah, it's, um, it's kind of stayed like it is for right now, which I don't mind the, the gap. At first, I think the, the, the space between there just felt kind of empty, and the longer mm -hmm. it's been like that, I'm, I'm totally okay with it. I think I may just fill it up with plants. Yeah, and I think if you had some version plants coming out of there, either like terrestrial plants or whatnot, I think that would definitely yep. fill it out more. And Have you had any issues with this, like shaking or moving or anything like that, or has it been No, it's stable? it's been very stable. Um, of course, uh, it's all, there's no mortar uh, between any of the joints. Mm -hmm. uh, everything's just held together with water weight. <laughs> um, so. I mean, it's it's fairly stable as far as I can figure. There's, I mean, got to be a thousand plus pounds of water up here. Right. Um, I think what you're saying with how it's like framed in with the two supports here and having everything there, most of your weight is in this area and most of the weight is over here, mm -hmm. and there's nothing in between really. It, it's, it's it's pretty well sandwiched in. Uh, yeah. I mean, so I, I don't think it's. It would take a lot of uh, lateral force from one, one side right, or the so other. Actually, have to move 
and it, the way it's positioned on a, on a wall in a fireplace, like it'd yeah. almost be hard to get over far enough right. to get to shove it really hard. Yeah. Um, uh, again, kind of leaning on Corey, if you've, if you've ever watched his videos where he put his together, when he got the tanks full, Corey's a big guy. Yeah. And he kind of like, I mean, like shoulders yeah. into it. And you see the water rocking back and forth, and, but it doesn't give. And he's yeah. like, we live in Washington. We have earthquakes here right. real regularly. Yeah. And so that was kind of what gave me the, the confidence to go ahead and try it. It's Gosh, like, yeah. I, I'm in a basement situation. I don't, I don't expect there's going to be any rumbling right. or anything like that going on. No traffic, yeah. you know, r shaking the building. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was like, well, let's go for it. Uh, if it ends in disaster, it's, it's you know, it's, it's water on the floor, but yeah, lessons amazing. learned. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's been a couple of years now, and so far so good, right? Everything's grown in pretty well. It and looks amazing. Uh, yeah. We enjoy it really well. At first I thought, because this is kind of our bedroom too, like it, it, we renovated the basement and put a bed oh, down I here. I thought it was your guys' bedroom. And so, so you have a fish room in your bedroom though. Yeah, and which is kind of a thing, right? It's, it's a little bit weird to be like, I have a bunch of tanks in my room. Yeah. Um, and so at first, I'm not sure my, my wife was super excited about it, but um, we've gotten used to it. We love it. Um, the, the sound is just kind of it's a nice ubiquitous. It's yeah. always there. You, uh -huh. uh, the lights are all, um, I'm, I'm a little bit spoiled now. They're all on Fluval uh, 3.0 lights on oh, wow. automatic okay. timers. So about 6.30 a.m. every start, everything starts uh, this real, real low blue color. You wake up in the morning? And it takes about four hours for it to get to full oh. light, but it's like our alarm clock, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, I, like I can, <laughs> I'll wake up in the bed and, and kind of squint and it's like, if I don't see blue light, I know it's like, oh, I'll close your eyes. I, got a few, good, yeah. I still got a few more minutes. Uh, so yeah, it's my, I, I tease our joke uh, that I've got a flu vial alarm clock. <laughs> it's a very expensive alarm clock. It is, um, <laughs> but I do enjoy it. That, that uh, that kind of daylight moon uh -huh. cycle thing uh, is, is, it's an awful lot to pay for, but I yeah. do enjoy it. Like yeah. it it's, do you leave uh, the blue lights on at nighttime then, or are they entirely off? Uh, they go off at about 11 p.m. Okay. Um, so I mean, I've got a really long light cycle yeah. from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. But, but you also have a lot of plants. I do have a lot of plants, and I've got it, uh, I guess I should uh, send you a screenshot or something, we can uh -huh. throw it in a video if you want to. I've got a, um, a, broken uh, light spectrum pattern, but more or less it comes up in the morning, uh -huh. I get a peak around uh, 11 a.m. Uh -huh. for about an hour, it goes back down for a couple hours in the okay. afternoon, and then back up again about 4 p.m. Gotcha. for an hour, and then back down. And so it's really not on for that full time, it's at like a lower intensity. Right, it, it kind of comes and goes, and, and even at the peak thin, I think I've got it like 50% on most of the lights. Yeah. Um, and so the idea, of course, is to not, you know, just get a giant blossom of algae, because uh -huh. uh, I'm, I'm sure I could do that too. <laughs> Very easily, yeah. So how are you filtering all your tanks then? Did you have, what, 11 tanks down here? Uh, yes, yeah, on this wall there's 11. Uh, everything's just running on air. Uh, it's all sponge filters. Um, the 20 gallons are just the um, six inch uh, double sponge filters like okay. you see uh, on Amazon or, yeah. or eBay or whatever. Um, they're pretty inexpensive, at like an eight packs, you know, under $20. Right, yeah, they're very cheap. Um, very, very, economical for, for a large mm -hmm. scale. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely, uh, to anybody that is interested in this style, the small tanks planted, mm -hmm. you don't need a giant amount of flow, you don't need canister filters, stuff like that. It's overkill. Uh, then this is, yeah, I love it. And um, you, or is this, how are you powering all of them? Are they individual air pumps or? Most, air of, the, or? most of them are on uh, individual air pumps. A lot of them are on these little uh, USB. Uh -huh. uh, Individual air pumps. Gotcha. Uh, again, something I kind of stole from Corey from Aquarian Co-op. Um, you know, seven, eight bucks a piece on Amazon. Yeah, that's not bad. And um, what I've got is power strips down here that have um, outlets on one side and USB outlets on the other. Okay. So and you so can maximize each that. power strip is going to power a, a bank of lights and a bank of air. Gotcha. Um, so that's for now, anyway. I, I've got plans in the future. We're renovating a bathroom uh -huh. on the other side of this wall, and yeah. we're actually running PVC through the wall, so that someday, if a linear uh, air pump goes out in the garage, then uh -huh. then it won't be so loud in here. And even those are relatively quiet in comparison. I'm hoping. I'm hoping so. Yeah. 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 Um, and that will that will more more than enough power all of your things. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's even the smallest one to be like. Too much air. Which yeah. I don't really think it's a bad thing. <laughs> no, definitely not. Because uh, of course, in, in this case, the the air also creates the flow. It's the right. push across the top. Yep. Um, so it, getting it at the right height is, is kind of a, a, a key thing. But uh, more air is always going to be more beneficial. Yeah. And then in these, does you have the power cords? Do you have heaters attached to any of them, or uh, a few? Tanks that have um, the big one is heated, uh -huh. um, and then the one over here with the pistos is okay. heated. That's Everything it. Else just 
Yeah. Fluctuates as the seasons go then. Yes, yeah. Uh, and, and, and as the room goes. It's funny, uh -huh. if you check the water temperature um, down on the bottom here, these bottom two tanks are sitting at about 70. Okay. Um, but up at the top, they're about 74, 75. Oh, wow. okay. And so it's a good five degree swing yeah. just from the, you know, six, eight feet in height. Um, I guess we can start in the corner if you want. That yeah. way we've, uh, we're already discussing them. Um, at See the top here, we've got some, um, they're Lambert's Lampi killifish. Uh -huh. uh, they look real similar to a, a Norman uh, Lampi. Pretty, you know, nondescript uh, little silver killifish with blue eyes, but uh -huh. they look nice. Uh, down here in the bottom, they're kind of hard, so you can see a little male down there, I think. I mean, yeah. Uh, is one of the lasses Soma Gilberti. Uh-huh. And, uh, let's see if we can... Because you have, what, around, like, 13 or 14 in here? Uh, yeah, I think it may have been about 15. 15, okay. Um, here's another little male right here. Yep. Man, they blend in so well. Oh, yeah, no, they're crazy camouflage. There is one that sticks real close to this lotus pod, so there may be, he may actually be inside one of the little <laughs> holes, like he'll actually go down there. It's a little female, I should say, uh, say he. So then, what is all of the, uh, the plants that you have in this tank? With the this overrun? is overrun with pearlweed. Okay. <laughs> uh, there is a little bit of hornwort and a little bit of uh, moss back uh -huh. in the back corner back there. Um, I can see a crypt and an anubius that's almost completely buried. <laughs> and another anubius that's upside down. Yes, there is, a, yeah, yeah. Um, but for the most part, uh, there's the one, the there's one the that one goes in the little hangs. lotus pod. Yeah, yeah it, 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 a lot of times it'll stick just its face in the front. <laughs> and so it's hilarious just to see its little tail kind of hanging out the uh -huh. back of the lotus pod. Yeah. That's the ones I can see that are to the front. I, I think they've all like been assigned their station. Uh -huh. They know exactly where they're going to live. Yeah, and so the ones that are deeper in the tank, I don't get to see very much. And uh, you said that you, you found that they were very good for... Um, taking care of planaria and yes tanks. yeah uh, that was partially what kind of inspired me to put them in this tank to start with is is this uh tank has um some neocaridine there's some yellow neos mm -hmm. and then there's some uh blue steel uh, okay. uh caridina and of course um when you have either shrimp only or shrimp heavy tanks with with something like killifish they're so tiny like this right. um your two uh biggest um I guess parasite uh, risks are going to be uh, planaria and hydra. Mm -hmm. um, either one are, are going to be a problem. Yeah. Not so much for adult shrimp, but they're going to make sure that there's no breeding. Uh, yeah. that there's not going to be a lot of babies going on. Um, and so I had a good bit of planaria in this tank, and I had tried to uh, control them with uh, some uh, blue star endlers, which are another. I'll show you guys in a little bit. And the endlers are fairly aggressive about picking up live food, and, uh -huh. and it just didn't it didn't cut it. At first, I saw a pretty good reduction, and then over time, the planaria kind of bounced back. Came back yeah. yeah, and um, so I was kind of uh, interested to see what would happen because I knew that you know we would need live food for these guys mm -hmm. anyway, and so yeah, I put them in there with that, and within literally forty eight hours, uh -huh. just no visible planaria wow, at all. That's crazy. Uh, it was it was extremely effective, and it's what inspired me to I put another pair uh -huh. in another put tank. Another and it, it, they cleaned it up immediately. Wow. Like it's, it's, yeah, it, I don't, I haven't recommended it to anyone on mine yet, <laughs> but yeah, if somebody asks me anymore, it's like, forget Finn de Benzel. It's, uh, uh -huh, it's, it's a last soma for me. Uh -huh. That's any of them will do. Yeah, it seems so. You have like four or five different species to choose from. And they're yeah. all, they're all basically the same fish with just different body patterns and uh, distributions. But just an, an effective little micro predator. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they are. I mean, even just like their ability to camouflage, like you know that like any little copepod or crustacean that's going by, and it just doesn't see it there, boom. Gone. I I noticed that I, I do feed them um, baby brine, uh, uh -huh. usually probably two or three times a week, and uh, so sometimes I, you'll kind of look and they'll suddenly turn and snap at something that you didn't even see, uh -huh. you, know, you didn't perceive, yeah, you know. Like, and they they move so quick, mm -hmm. and it's just like you see it one there a second, and then it's like it doesn't even look like it's swimming. It just just sort of hovers over to it and just goes. Yep. And then it's like a, like a snake almost. Yes, yes, so where it returns back uh -huh. to the original position yep. very, very quickly. And of course, um, I don't see any doing it right now. Maybe this little guy might a little bit here. He's getting a little waggle going, but they do that cool little dance. A little dance, oh yeah. Um, I'll have to throw in a, a dance in some of mine, but these are some of the same ones that I have. Yeah, because they, uh, they, they do this cool little um, asymmetrical fin flip. Uh -huh. uh, all, all of the, the fins move independently, like yep. almost in a ripple pattern, and it's so cool. Yes, it's, it's unlike anything else that I've seen in any other fish. I, I, I would say the same. I don't know that I've seen anything else that does between that. Between other nano, like dwarf cichlids, like epistos or cribs, or even like African cichlids, like none of them have that elaborate of a, 
a dance for trying to, to mate, or even just to, to like spar with the, the other males in the tanks. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah the, like, exactly. The uh, the pistos and the um, the blue right glitch. All about posturing and uh -huh. displays, lots and lots of uh, show and all of that, and I've never seen anything yeah. like this. Of course, theirs all just flair. You know? Right, they're just trying to make themselves look bigger. As big as possible. They're like, hey, look at me, like I'm, I'm here, like actively, like you yep. don't want to come, you don't want to come over here, like yep. you'll get messed up. <laughs> so what's in the take next to it? Uh, this is back to my uh, tried and tested uh, guppies and tetras and shrimp. Um, we've got an albino. Uh, a little bit of a, co a snake skin or cobra uh, uh -huh. guppy. When I first got them, they were mostly lower swords. Was the uh, the strain, and uh -huh. so that's you can tell that those that's still kind of the uh, the, the ones that catch your eye, you know. Yeah. Um, but since then, we've gotten some uh, some liar tails, some um, top swords, uh, a little variety of everything. And yeah. if I uh, cold as I should to to go to one <laughs> tail type or, or something like that effect, mm -hmm. it, it would stick to to one breed. But of course, I'm not. It was time for that. I, I, that I usually when I buy uh, if if I get hold of it, like a lower sword and if they end up being you know dual swords fine you yeah. know it's like I, it, it's not it's not the end of the a world. huge loss to yeah. me I, I I've I've not crossed them with other you know right. yuppies and ended up with excuse me with mutts yeah um, so yeah I'm, so if you wanted to you could pair the line back down to uh, oh yeah just grab you a couple lower swords and right. just selectively breed for that for yeah. a few generations I'm sure that's how they, they came about in the first place and what tetras do you have in here those are just regular old blue neons. Um, uh, fat blue yeah, neons. Yeah, they're very fat. It's like that's that's much larger than any almost any neons I've. And these I've are ever seen. old. I would say probably three plus years. Okay. Wow. Um, and it looks like you have like at least four or five in here. Ah, uh, there Not used more. to be more, but there there may may be dying off. I said they are yeah, pretty they're, old. They're, they're old. Yeah, they're uh, old. So yeah, there 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 were a few more, but yeah, they are quite old for neons. Uh -huh. And what other shrimp do you have here? You said there's shrimp, guppies, and tetras. Are yes, uh, there's just blue neons. There's or blue, ne uh, blue neos? Or blue neos. You can see a couple oh, yeah. right here. The dark substrate does make them hard to pick out sometimes. Yep. Um, usually the easiest time to catch them or to see them is when they're up at the top under the light. Mm -hmm. And I just don't, I don't see, see many right now. Here. There's one smaller one right in the very oh, yeah, middle right of the there. tank. Yep. Oh. I, uh, I'm real partial to the dark substrate. Uh-huh. Why is that? Personal preference, I think. Okay. Uh, the the lighter substrates, I, I feel like look not quite as natural to me. Even though I know in nature you do tend to find yeah. light substrate all the time, but in a in a fish room like this, I feel like the dark color looks more natural to uh, me. Do you do you find that the dark substrate also hides a bunch of mold and other things? Yes, like that? as I say, it, it does allow <laughs> for my lazy fish keeping. Uh, yeah, because I don't Which I don't. It's not a bad thing. I don't do a lot of vacuuming and suction uh -huh. and things like that. Uh, there's snails and, and shrimp in most of the tanks, and yeah. so they tend to break down whatever ends up on the floor. And so uh, yeah, that that dark substrate definitely helps hide the color. Yeah. Or hide the the detritus the or detritus whatever. Detritus and poop and all. Yeah. Other. Um, but also the dark substrate, I've, I've seen that upstairs too, outside with the, the big uh, dark Rubbermaid tub. Mm -hmm. I think the dark background helps uh, keep the shrimp colored up. Huh. Um, it seems that if you have light substrate, you get more tendency to get more clear shrimp. If you have a right. real dark substrate, you're going to get darker colors. Right. You get more of a camouflage mm -hmm. instinct type nature. And, uh, which is great because then you get colored up shrimp, but then against the dark background, they're still hard to see. So yeah. maybe, maybe it's good for shrimp breeding, but not good for shrimp display. Right, yeah. How I, often are you doing water changes? Uh, I'm pretty uh, not great <laughs> about water changes. I would say I, I do a lot more topping off than I do okay. actual changes. Okay. I top off probably twice a week okay. um, because I do get a, a fair amount of, of evaporation. Right. They all have glass lids, but uh -huh. they still end up getting filled up quite a bit. Uh -huh. uh, I usually tend to collect rainwater uh -huh. um, through most of the, the summer and, okay. and tend to do with that. So it gets a little bit softer as summer goes. Right. Um, of course, we get pretty hard water here. We do. Like it's upwards of like eight. Yeah, hours. yeah, it's it's very hard and, and lots of calcium, lots of mineral, right. um, high pH. Uh, it's just not necessarily good for pistos or some of the it's other. It's not for the guppies. It's great yeah. for the neos. I have a lot of uh, neocaridina shrimp, uh -huh. and once they've adjusted to it, they're 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 rock solid on yeah. it. Uh, as long as you're not swinging up and down, they're right. they're they're totally they're, fine with it. They like having a consistent water mm -hmm. parameters rather than targeting a specific area. Exactly. So trying to adjust it messing with it right not gonna necessarily yeah it it's been my experience that they'll accept almost anything as uh -huh. long as it stays relatively stable right. what, what what is your favorite fish that you have down here that you're keeping in this set, set up right now um 
you know? The fish that I got you, that wouldn't be a, that wouldn't be a bad thing. I mean, I have to, I, when you said, like, when you asked that, that's what kind of, um, I was, I was hoping you wouldn't call me out for, uh, for trying to, to win some favor, but honestly, the last of some are kind of, they're my newest thing to the collection, but it's also uh -huh. something I'd wanted for a long time. Yeah. Um, both of them and the Athanius Minto, which are almost identical looking uh -huh. fish. They're very similar. Were both on my list for several years, literally two or three years. I had been looking for both of these species. And uh, had debated about keeping them inside, keeping them outside. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is, you know, tubs, things like right. that. And uh, wasn't able to get them in time to get them outside for this year. Mm -hmm. And then, lo and behold, during the middle of the season, I, I was able to get both. Right. And so it's like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to jump at the opportunity. Yeah. Um, so, pass that up. yeah, free tank space went away uh, <laughs> real yeah. quick. Yeah, I, I've heard though that the Elisoma, like there are people in Louisville that are keeping them outdoors year round. Year round, uh -huh. interesting. In tubs, like in uh, 55 gallon larger stocking tubs, 120 gallons, because they can take uh, down in Florida, they they take down to like 39, 40 degrees, and like that's when they start dying off. They're not very happy, but they will survive. They'll stress, but they'll they'll take yeah. it. I, I've got a tub on the back porch with uh, light white clouds mm -hmm. that have, I've kept out there what, year round with neo shrimp, right. and um, I keep uh, an aerator on it year round and with a heater, right. it, so it does keep it. You know, I would say at lowest it gets around 45. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah, um, so it stays warmish. Right. Uh, for for white clouds anyway. Yeah. That's enough. And for shrimp, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I've not uh, taken the plunge yet to, to commit to moving some of those a lot, a lot some, um, <laughs> Well, if, uh, if we, either you or I, can breed some more, I definitely think that we will. Yes. Well, I want to experiment with those. I think that there, there are a lot of people that have uh, warmer climates, even just down in Tennessee um, and Georgia, that they've grown them outdoors year-round in large IBC totes. Like they have 50, like 275 gallon IBC totes. See, that's great. They just have colonies of them, like nice. four different colonies from different collection points. So, I mean, I'll, I'll take the brownie points for saying that Elisoma Grotai has been your favorite. I, that really wasn't pandering in that case. That, like I said, it's just been on my list for so long. They were kind of a, a bucket list fish uh -huh. that I was excited when you, when you gave me the opportunity. I was like, yes, 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 definitely. That's uh -huh. so crazy that you came across them. All right, so let's move on to the next guppy tank that we have here. And that'll be a common theme is there's a lot of guppies in there, which is not a bad thing. I think they're a very cool fish. Yeah, I think you're going to hear that a lot. Uh, <laughs> shocker, this one's, this one's guppies and shrimp. Uh -huh. um, these are uh, American Blue Deltas. Um, as you see, they're real tail-heavy oh, yeah, they have tail heavy Very tail-heavy. And some very large females, too. Like, those they are... are I, I feel like most of the guppies that I see have, like, the males are smaller than the females, but not that much not smaller. Not that dramatic, but, right. And this one, it's a very, very, some very chunky females in here. They are. And these, by, um, not really by selection, but by coincidence, some of these have uh, more of what they call the, the shark fin uh -huh. in the females. And it's that, it almost has an elongated top. Okay. Uh, kind of a, uh, a shark fin style. Yeah. Um, and that female has a pretty. I good... didn't select for it. It's not been intentional, but uh -huh. it's it's something like, oh, well, those are shark fin females. And some sometimes it's something people find desirable. Other times people it's, don't care for it. It's yep. just it's just it is what it is. Yep. And then, so what shrimp do you have in here? In here are I some see one orange over here. Caribbean. Okay. Um, yeah, and as you said, that one's not real colored up. Yeah, uh, that will happen too. And again, that's one of those things. Where if you if you cull more, you'll get better um, consistent coloration. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one kind of making a run for the top of the <laughs> bit darker orange. Might miss them a little the, bit. The males tend to be a little bit more translucent, a little less pigment yep. to them. Uh, the females a little bit more colored up. And then here you have pearl weed. Hornwort, Anubius, and Java moss again, yes? yes and some yeah. dwarf sage on the bottom? Uh, yes, yeah, you okay. do see some dwarf sage running through there. So yeah, cool. again, yeah, a pretty, pretty common uh, uh -huh. theme as far as the plants go. You'll and see then, hey, something ones. works. Like, there's no, there's, like, if, it, if it's working on all the, there's no reason to, to mix it up and have. Well, and once you've got it going, it's free, yeah. right? You oh, yeah. yeah. Once, you, once you start getting a lot of them, you can just take some out of this tank and plop it down to the next one. And yep. you don't have to worry about buying plants ever again once you get them established. Oh, yeah. You're definitely going to end up it's giving a, them away. It's a giving away. It's like, hey, uh, I did some trimmings today. Does anybody uh, mm -hmm. want some before I uh, pitch them? <laughs> and then uh, in the back corner back here, I've got a little uh, bronze crypt. Okay. That The only thing that's interesting about that really is the uh, little glass container that I've got stuck in. Uh huh. Those are actually yogurt cups. Yogurt. I was going to say, <laughs> they look like candle cups almost. Uh, yeah. I, I, we, we bought till, uh, we got some, it's this little French uh, pot yogurt uh -huh. or uh, they have little cups of mousse. Yeah. And I would I would <laughs> let the kids eat the yogurt or mousse because uh -huh. I was collecting the, the glass yep. containers to stick plants in. I'm doing a very similar thing now with my, my yogurt cups to be able to propagate out more plants, to be able to put them in there and be able to move them from one tank to the other very quickly 
and very easily. Last summer, I had a bunch of bucephalandra growing in uh, old Wendy's uh, chicken nugget boxes. You, if you buy the chicken, <laughs> the 50 piece chicken nuggets, they come in these big black trays. That's a commitment. Uh, well, I mean, I have, I have oh, that's children, yeah. yeah. So it, they're probably like, awesome, like down one oh, some yeah. more chicken, like, yeah. I mean, 10 bucks for 50 chicken nuggets. That's, uh -huh. that's, that's definitely an like economical way to do it. Uh -huh. But yeah, I would, I would reuse the trays after and uh, put um, cuts of uh, Buse Philandra uh -huh. in there and just let it take off, yep. kind of uh, half submerged. And it, it did real well until I, I had a couple of real nice uh, clumps and took them outside one day and got them too much in the sun and got one of the trays completely. Just, just burn it a lot, just scorch it uh, right up. And I was like, oh, oh, not doing that well, anymore. Put Lesson, it back inside. <laughs> lessons learned on that uh -huh. one. Uh, so what's in the tank below? Uh, what strain of guppies, rather, do we have down here below? And you'll notice as we get lower and lower, we're going to start squatting down because he utilizes the entire width or height of his tanks. There's no... There's no missed opportunity to put tanks in here. I do, and I, I've, I've often heard that, oh, you're gonna regret that eventually, and, and I'm, I may, we'll see. Uh -huh. um, Maybe so like 20 far, years down the road. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping <laughs> is, by then I won't care, either I'll, I'll take it all apart or uh -huh. it'll be somebody else's problem. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, the same common theme here, we've got some, um, these are a Dumbo uh, mosaic, a blue Dumbo mosaic uh, guppy that is, they were affectionately called Dirty Dancers when I first got <laughs> them. Um, so you've got this uh, modeling, some yellow, some blue, yeah. a, a lot going on in there. And so they're not a, um, what I would consider a very well-refined mm -hmm. strain. Is, is this also coming out of that same yes. strain? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, all of this weird variety you're seeing is all, these were all born in this tank for sure. Wow. Um, that is a lot of variety going from a male is. that's like that to a male that's like that. You'll even see uh, pandas, um, which are very short body, short Dumbo uh, uh -huh. males. If I can pick one out somewhere. <laughs> Too many to choose from. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. Let's see if I see Here's anything. one right here. Oh, yeah. Yep. And it just totally looks different, right? I mean, complete yeah. different fin pattern, different coloration, everything. Uh, should not come from the same line, right, but, but yeah. they do. And then this one, you get like a little, almost like a peacock endler. Mm -hmm. It gets a little spot on it, um, mm. a little wild type. So if you really wanted to, you could refine it down. But again, you don't necessarily mind that they right. are. Uh, I think that was kind of the idea when I first got them. I thought, well, you know, I could I could go several different directions. If you if yeah. you get five or ten gallon tanks and want to light and breed guppies, you can go lots of different directions. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that was kind of well. Maybe if I want to later, I can. But I've just enjoyed the variety of them, so I, I kind of let them go. Again, yeah. it's kind of my laissez-faire type style. <laughs> um, I, you'll, yeah. hear, you'll hear that a lot, which is, <laughs> it goes along with my breeding style, too. That's why I've got live bears and shrimp and things like that have been mm -hmm. such a good success for me is because they don't really require any kind right. of uh, special intervention. Yeah. yeah, there's no high maintenance to there's it There's no all. little tiny fry that you have to try to grow up and right. get to a certain size to get them on baby brine shrimp. And right. And uh, the shrimp in here are red neocaridina. You'll see some there right in the middle that are uh -huh. kind of using the light. Um, they're just a, a cherry shrimp. Yep. Oh. Very and popular is this, now. Is this one of the boosts of that, that survived? Is a little, that is a little piece of boost, yeah. Uh -huh. And then the last thing <laughs> in this one, there's um, ember tetras. Ember tetras, okay. Uh, there's a couple over here on the side and a couple back in the corner here. And you said that these last time had spawned in here, correct? They have. I, you... I started off with about five or six, and I think last I counted there's either eight or nine. Okay. And so it's not like we're getting prolific numbers. No. But, but it's the laissez-faire style, yeah, you it, know? It, like, if they breed, like, fantastic. Right. Like, yeah. it, it, well, and just surprising, too, because um, with shrimp and snails both in there, I was shocked that any egg layer was able right. to get something to survive. Yeah. Um, so they must really just be scattering <laughs> eggs everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> and just some, one or two of them are just making it. Yes. Yeah, yeah literally. Uh, yeah, because it seems like every six months it's like, oh, there's, there's one more than there uh -huh. used to be. <laughs> And what's in the very bottom tank down here? Down here in the bottom, this is some of my uh, cold water uh, species. This is uh, the females you can see here in the front are Aphanius Minto. Uh -huh. And this is their males. Uh, there's two of those guys. Yeah, those do there. look quite similar to Elisoma. Don't they? They have the same uh, that kind of um, almost salmonid type shape uh -huh. with the, the body, that real torpedo shape, but then yeah. that real curved uh rounded uh, fin. He's an aggressive little one, too. They are an aggressive species. Um, the, the common name for these guys is an iridescent tooth carp. <laughs> uh, and they, uh, for something so tiny, they are feisty. Yeah. Um, you, you'll see people uh, report them online that they'll keep them with uh, much bigger fish. And they and hold the, their own? And the, they'll, they'll definitely hold their own, uh, oh. like other cichlids. Right. Uh, these are, they're actually killifish. Um, uh, from my, my research before I got them, it was mostly seemed like they come from uh, mountains in Iran. Uh, oh, wow. In, in the Middle East. 
And so um, their temperature uh, tolerance is extreme. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll, they'll go, you know, like 40 degrees up to like 110. Yeah. Uh, as long as the water's hard. Wow. I uh, wish that's not a problem here. Right. Never, never been an <laughs> issue for us. No. And so, yeah, that's why I've read online. Like, it doesn't matter. As long as it's wet water and rock <laughs> <Wet> hard. water. <laughs> yeah. Like the, as long as it's wet water and hard rock. They, 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 they do prefer liquid water, uh -huh. uh, not frozen or boiling. But otherwise, and liquid rock, yeah. basically, yeah. Yeah, but otherwise, they're, they seem really solid. And uh -huh. so, yeah, they're definitely a species I'm interested in trying uh, some outdoor tubs or a pond with. Are they a typical killifish in that they are, you want to put them in peat moss and... I don't think so. No, okay. uh, they, they seem to be just uh, water column breeders. That okay, oh, wow. spawn eggs and then, you know, oh. find them a little piece of uh, java moss or something to, to, right. to nest in. Oh. And Which, then the other fish in here... The other fish in are here are... Sabla barbs? Yes. Okay. Uh, or whatever name you whatever want Whatever name to, you want to call them. Uh, you hear them Asian called... Rummy nose. Asian rummy nose. You hear them called rummy nose resbora. Uh -huh. You hear them called sabla barbs. Uh, I've seen them called uh, naked barbs before. Naked barbs. That's uh, a <laughs> they are a scaleless fish, um, okay. kind of like a catfish. It's 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 a smooth huh. skin. I did not know that about them. And uh, so I think that's why some people call them naked because they don't have <laughs> scales. They don't have any scales. Just for fish, we make them naked. Uh -huh. And they do, they do get that rummy nose, that bright orange nose on that blue body, which uh -huh. I like. Do you want to move over to the 55 gallon tank? That Absolutely. Is right here next to us. This 55 I have had for around 20 plus years now. Oh, wow. um, this was one of the first things my wife uh, bought for me when we first started dating. It was a birthday present. Does she regret that? Um, I think she's kind of proud of the fact that, that you know, years and years uh -huh. later, it's still, it's still like, here. It's so still here. It was here. a good gift then. Right, exactly. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. something you just got and used and got rid of it. It's been like, no, this is a, yeah. a long-lasting gift. I yeah. guess that's a good way to look at it, too. I, I, I think so. <laughs> um, so in here, uh, it's kind of a little bit of a, of a black water setup. You've got a lot of uh, driftwood, and so it's kind of a little orange with a little bit of tannin mm -hmm. in there. Um, the classic black neon tetras uh, are oh, yeah. pretty heavy. There's probably about 16, 17 of them in there. Uh -huh. And even a couple of uh, little silver tips that were acquired on accident sometimes. Right yeah. yeah. <laughs> Things like that just happen. <laughs> uh -huh. Especially if someone was trying to get rid of some stuff, you're like, ah, they can get put in with my other yes, tetras. Yes, exactly. It's, not... it's like, oh, yeah, I'll, fine, I'll put them in there. Um, in fact, it, I have uh, a couple others in another tank that were supposed to have been uh, some Kubatai Rizbora. Uh -huh. And uh, then only you know, after they got bigger, I was like, those are not Rizbora, those are just silver tip tetras. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> uh, so also in here we have uh, some blue galaris. Uh -huh. uh, let's see, there's a couple of the males yeah. you can see up here. And the females are more skittish. I don't know if I see I haven't right seen now. any. Oh, right there, right in front of us. Oh, yeah, there she is. Yeah, they do blend in more with that little bit uh -huh. of duller color. And Those are more, just such beautiful killifish. I do enjoy them. They, uh, the, the guy I buy them from uh, has always called them the king of the killies, and yeah. uh, you can't disagree. You can't disagree right? with that. No, that's that's a hard. I mean, the size, the yeah. color, the like, like you see the flaring and, uh, the, and the just the boisterous nature. Yes, of it, yeah. yes, very very uh, loud personalities, which uh -huh. you, you can't help but watch. No. And do you have anything along the bottom here, or is it just? Just snails in here. Do you have any um, pleckos or any shrimp in this tank? Or? There is some shrimp, but they're okay. usually pretty hard to find. Um, and they're just a monos. Um, okay, gotcha. Yeah, those so are gonna... they're, they're usually pretty shy. Mm -hmm. And um, my monos are actually fairly dark. Uh, I don't mm. know if it's because of the dark substrate. Right. Um, but most people get real, real nice, clear monos. <laughs> and mine tend to turn kind of tan on me. Uh -huh. And so they disappear. <laughs> <laughs> They sort of blend into the they wood. Do. And they do. And, and they love to get up underneath things, hang uh -huh. upside down and all that. So I, As well as probably get away from the, the killifish that yes. are in there that uh, would probably terrorize them yes. if, if at all possible. And then the other thing they saw in here was the triple, or is this triple red cockatoides? Or are yes. These okay. Yes. Um, well, actually, I guess they're, they're, they're kind of mutts. I think these are actually super red by triple reds. Okay. Uh, because the, um, the males that they came from were all triple reds, but I think the females may have been uh, either super red cross or just straight up super reds. Okay. Huh. They still are a very beautiful fish, though. They do. I, I enjoy them. And they have a lot of um, black in the tan and the, the red uh, portion, which uh -huh. I think is kind of nice. It's not uh, super typical, yeah. but I like the dark, dramatic color. You can see this one has a whole lot of black in his tail. He is one of the... He looks like he's the boss of the tank. He's a, he's a big boy. <laughs> um, it's funny. The For the first, uh, I'd say, year or so they were all together, the Galeris 
very much ruled the tanks. And uh -huh. as these epistos have grown to full size, it's gotten a lot more balanced. Uh -huh. and everybody kind of holds their own. Huh. And this is a 55, you said, right? Yes. Uh, this is this is a very. I feel like 55s are a very hard tank to actually scape, like because of their the height, height and the the depth of it. Like you don't have. If you look at this, you have 18 inches going back. We have four feet to go across, and yeah. it's like 20 something inches tall. And it's just it's just it's a hard it hard is. tank to do a lot of planet stuff because you don't have that depth that we normally like for. The the depth would be nice to have more. Um, that is a limitation of this rack. Mm -hmm. uh, the blocks that I chose to use are uh, 16 inch blocks. So gotcha. Everything was going to be limited to mm, to, to that. that, to that. So you couldn't get a 75 right. or a 40 gallon breeder because exactly. those are yeah. It was going to have to be 55s, big. 20 longs. Um, I guess 10 gallons would work. You know, something with that uh -huh. that one foot depth. Yeah. It's a very nice tank. It's, yeah, I can't. It's it's a uh, like you said. It's the frame. Everything else is the frame around it. And this mm -hmm. is definitely the the centerpiece here. It does. When you walk in the room, uh -huh. it catches it's, your it's eye. the first thing you get drawn to is this mm -hmm. tank here, it and it the... makes it look bigger than a fifty-five. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people it, yeah. see the wall and assume like, oh, look at the giant tank in the middle. Yeah, it's actually you know, it's a sixty-five. A, it's a pretty common tank. It's not mm -hmm. a. Not, I mean, it, it is a, a show style tank, mm -hmm. I guess, being the taller, yeah. um, but not anything uh, I would consider, you know, real outlandish or expensive. Right. Yeah, no. Very okay. simple, very, very easy. Just the same pearl weed with some hygrophila uh -huh. here and then some kumbamba. Yes. Yep. Uh -huh. so, and then some guppy grass. Lots of guppy grass. And then um, some valicinaria Yep, here? some valicinaria to take up some of the height, uh -huh. uh, which of course those grow long and tall. Right, um, all the way across. And then lots of the Brazilian pennywort just to fill up oh, the yeah. top. Oh, yeah, yep. And then some Anubias to get thrown in there yeah, as well. Yeah, because I yeah. throw Anubias in everything. Yeah, especially once this starts growing well and you start getting tons of these little clumps, like you just start having all of this here that you can just be able to take from one tank to the other. And mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, that, that is some sort of Busa Phalanger. Oh, that's some Busa Okay, that's, I thought that that's might be some. onto a rock there. Okay, I thought that, that was almost small enough that it could be nano with how its, uh, uh -huh. its leaves are shaped. There is some too. I think there's some Nana Petite right here. Okay. Um, I think this one down here is actually an F. Zelly. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. Huh. Yeah, so Very I, cool. if you were a, a true uh, aquascapist, I guess that they, they frown upon mixing uh, types of the same family. Uh, huh. so like they, they, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I've heard that before anyway. Like with Dutch huh. scapes, for example, like you yeah. can't have like three different kinds of Rotala. It's like, no, huh. one Rotala here, Ludwigia here, you know, like one of each type. No mixing. Right. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't follow the rules. <laughs> my, my Anubius is just what and it is, what it is. You don't necessarily have to follow the rules. It's your tanks and you can uh, do with them as you like. And the... I, I look at it as a matter of practicality. It's, uh -huh. like, it, it is, it's what I have or uh -huh. what a cutting comes off. Yeah. You would think with the the type of fish, with the, the cockatoides and the, and the um, blue galaris, this is definitely by far, compared to guppies and tetras, my most aggressive tank. Uh -huh. And I still enjoy like just sitting back and watching it. It's it doesn't come across as as uh, as aggressive as, as like my African cichlid tank. Right. Yeah. Too. Those can be very. Aggressive. It still feels relatively calm and community tank like, mm -hmm. even though you've got some some bigger fish in there. Yeah. For sure. And then we can guys move on to the rest of the outer frame, the last five tanks down here. Uh, this one is less uh, interesting as far as diversity. It's just guppies in there. These are um, <laughs> some blue uh, grass and red grass uh, Japan guppies. Okay. Um, the, they're both uh, from the same line. The red is the dominant color, uh -huh. so you'll get more of those. Uh, probably about a two to one uh, ratio, so okay. maybe a third of them will come out blue. Uh, and the other will come out the red and black one. Well, you, the, re, the, the red is your, your dominant color here, and then okay. your blue is your recessive here. These uh, are just calls, gotcha. just uh, Okay, so that, those, okay. With gotcha. no spots at all uh -huh. is your, uh, your undesired. Gotcha. See, this is the, the more dominant style, that red mm -hmm. body with the blue, or the uh, red tail. The blue body with the red <laughs> tail. I can, I can speak words. Uh, for these top tanks, there's just one 48 inch bar all the way across, which gotcha. two 30 inch tanks is 60 inches, so you've got yeah, a good. You have to stretch it a little bit. Yeah, you got yeah. a good he's, gap he, in the end. He's ends. getting a little less light than he probably would. Yeah, you probably, probably like, like if I move him onto this side. <laughs> And what's the thing next to them? This one is uh, some blue star endlers up in the top. Okay. Uh, so they're a uh, also from the Poesia family, uh -huh. family uh, like guppies, but they're uh, wingy eye as opposed to uh, uh, what's the what are guppies? 
their side. Is it? Is it? Are they also wingy eye? Or are they? Uh, no, wingy eye. Reticulata. 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 Yes, thank you, reticulata. reticulata. I, I totally drew a blank there. Thank you. Like, <laughs> guppy guy can't remember the name of the species of guppies. <laughs> wow. Um, we so, all have our days. Yeah. So we've got some some um, little endlers in there, and uh -huh. then there are some shell dwellers. Oh somewhere. wow, that's a very interesting combo of shell dwellers and. Uh, it is. And uh, there's probably not something a lot of people try, uh -huh. um, but they both like the high pH. They yeah. both like the hard water. Uh -huh. I've got some um, Texas Holy Rock in there, uh -huh. uh, which, of course, turns the, the, the water into liquid rock. Right. Um, which neither of them seem to mind. No. Uh, I've got breeding going on in both. There's some small uh, Shelleys in there, too. They may what be. Shelleys are they? These are um, Similaris. Okay. Similis. Yes. Similis, yeah. The, they have banding all the way up to the front of yes, the face. Yes, all yeah. onto the face. <laughs> yeah. Huh, that's a very interesting like combination. Do you find that the uh, the similis end up eating some of the like? Have you ever seen them chasing after some I of the frog? I haven't seen predation. Okay. I assume there is. Right. Yeah. Um, but I mean, with endlers, fry is never a problem. No. <laughs> I, I hate to be callous like that and say that they're food, but it, yeah, if there's some predation going on, I, I'm not trying to stop it or anything like that. But yeah, I would I would assume there is some. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Which isn't. And there's a little shelly when the, the baby's coming out right there in the middle, kind of hovering over his shell. I think he darted back, he back in. in. Oh, oh, there he is, right there in the center. And then there's one of the big ones over here in the uh -huh. corner. He's as soon as we go over there, he's going to see the go. They're so shy. <laughs> it's also amazing how they fit in those shells. Oh, I know uh, how they their curl their body up size. Them? Yeah, yeah, compared to the size of the inside of that shell, uh -huh. it's, I don't know how they fit in the cavity. <laughs> Or how they get back out. Right, and how they, they, they just sort of squirm themselves out. When I first got them, uh, it was a young a kid that sold them because he had got frustrated <laughs> with them. And uh, he couldn't capture them, so he gave me the shells and all. <laughs> and just had I had to take it on faith that there were actually uh -huh. fish in there because I just had a bucket full of shells and water. I yeah. couldn't see no, any fish. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I, I believe you. And uh -huh. so, of course, you know, you take them home, and I'm literally just moving what looks like, like empty shells, shells into uh -huh. the water. Like, I hope there's some fish in these. And uh -huh. sure enough, you know, you start watching them pop out here and there. And slowly but surely, you're like, ah, I didn't get scammed. It's, it's all good. Yes. Uh, one thing I have heard about how to capture those guys is you take a, uh, a plastic cup, and you put their shell on top of it, and they will see that they're above the rest of the area and they'll swim out of it and go somewhere else. So you can they'll slowly, move away from uh -huh, the shell. So you can keep removing the shells out of the tank. That's great. Until uh, you're only left. I have left not heard that, but now uh -huh. I, I can definitely see how that could make sense. Yep. As soon as they dart out and they realize that, oh no, I'm out in the middle, of, like I need to get back down and there's no other shells for them to go back down to. Yep. Bada bing, bada boom. I have noticed that. I, I tend to keep the shells kind of evenly spread uh -huh. across the whole bottom because they are a little bit territorial yeah. and they will move them around mm -hmm. as to their liking. They'll do a lot of digging, a lot yeah. of relocating. I mean, you can even just see some of the, oh, the, yeah. the mounds they have here. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it changes pretty rapidly. Oh, yeah. too. And that's one of the really fun things about keeping them is that they aren't ever going to have the same tank set up from one day to the other and you can try to make it whatever you want but they're like eh, yeah i'm a bulldozer i'm gonna come in here and yes redo it as i see fit yes. not as you see fit and then we have another tank below it yes which more, guppies. Is more guppies and uh, what strain is this this is jirawi farms lazuli guppies okay um the blue body with this kind of uh liar tail with that weird speckled pattern uh -huh. is the uh the the archetype or the one you're really looking for right the red here is kind of a less desired uh, version um, gotcha. but you get more of them okay so you, which one is your preferred one out of these two i, I like them both honestly okay. that's, that's again it's one of those things if i cold better i could get i could select more for this this blue the blue, body. The blue sheen is just beautiful it now. is um, but the the red ones tend to get more of a ribbon fin, especially uh -huh. in the females. You get these real long uh, colored fins, uh -huh. and so I kind of like that too. It's like, well, yeah. I don't want to select against it because right. it's it's just variety to me. Mm -hmm. And it's always like I also think like in these tanks, it's like you get to have a variety and not just the same singular fish over exactly. and over again. Well, and that's the risk with the guppies is I can't put two different kinds of guppies in the same tank because they will crossbreed and right. I will lose that strain. And yep. so some of these strains that do give me multiple styles of drops, mm -hmm. I don't mind at all. It, it, like right. I said, it's, it's variety without losing that strain. Right, it, without the ability to go back and be like, I yes. want to actually go back to just the blues or I want to go back to the reds. Right. Huh. And then the tank below it, this is the other heated tank that you have, correct? This is. Uh, and this one has a uh, histogramma in it. Um, there's a Bella Union right up here in the corner. Oh, that's uh -huh. what you're looking at right now. Yep. Uh, the Bella Union is the blue face with, or the uh, yellow face with the blue body. Huh. Um, and then the other type that you'll see in there are the um, opal uh, borei, the, uh, with the jeweled cheeks. Uh -huh. 
Um, there's well, two smaller males, and they may be out and about. Yeah. yeah, they may be pretty hidden in amongst the moss. They do, and the females of these oh, are yeah. really tiny, so you, it, it's hard to catch them. And you see, big boy there. He, yeah. he, he has no. Problem. I can see how you like the Alisoma rotai and the other pupfish. If you like apistas as well, yeah. like they all fall in that same same realm of. Uh -huh. Tiny aggressive nano fish that uh -huh. fill out a very showy. Fill out a tank some very young. There's some babies in there too. They keep oh, breeding. Yeah. The Borrelii or yeah. the uh, okay. Uh, so they get baby brine also uh, a couple times a week. Gotcha. What else do you feed them when you aren't feeding uh, them baby brine? Um. Oh, here's a little tiny one right in the middle there. It's a baby baby. Oh yeah, he's a very tiny. Uh, they also get the, the same uh, standard flake foods. I use uh, uh, brine shrimp directs uh, cool mix. Uh -huh. is my flake food that I typically use. Uh, I use uh, Dr. Basler's um, uh, biofood. Uh huh. Um, so we've got aloe or herbal, either one. Gotcha. If you're familiar with it, it's huh. a very fine granulated um, food, and it comes with these little scooper spoons. That's always nice when those little tiny, little tiny openings. And did you say that these, this food was the food that the alosoma yes. ate when you put it in, but it's uh, very expensive? Yes, well, <laughs> one particular kind, uh, the most expensive brand of expensive food is called Kavar, which I guess is their caviar. Uh -huh. And of course, that was the one that right, the last alosoma took immediately. Yeah. Um, I also had another one just by dumb luck. I didn't order it. I had placed another order with Brian Shimp Direct, uh -huh. and they sent me a sample of Oh yeah, I've had this what they're before. calling yeah. is golden. I'm not even familiar with it, but I've huh. noticed that the Elastoma like it fine. <laughs> huh. that's, uh, that's good to know. Because I, I think from what I've read online is that the Elastoma is that once you start breeding them, and if you breed them without feeding them live foods, the babies will take Take prepared food. foods, no it problem seems whatsoever. Like if they catch it sinking, uh -huh, they'll, they will, take it. they'll take it. But if they catch if it, it on the ground, yeah, it's if it not hits moving, the ground, it's done. It's done. And yeah. so yeah, it's 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 uh, real, real slow, consistent. Like oh, I'll feed a little bit uh -huh. now, feed a little bit now, uh -huh. and keep trying to get it to take some of it. And then so every now and then I'll, I'll see him like actually hit uh -huh. something as it's I, all dropping. All mine have just eaten it and spit it back out. I was like, come on, give us some worms now. I, I do see that too. Like, like, you see him kind of mouth it, mouth it, and spit it back out. Like. You know we don't eat this. Like you keep on trying, but yep. even if it's in the shape of a worm, we're not going to eat it. Yeah, they do get that. They get. Um, I, I harvest mosquito larvae out of the uh -huh. backyard. I've got you know, plant pots <laughs> out there. Um, a lot of little copa pods uh -huh. and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Some. Uh, I had Walter worms, but we went through most of those. <laughs> if you know their culture, I have some more of those. Okay, I may take you up on it because okay. yeah, my uh, my first culture I, I pretty much used up, and then I had another culture and hadn't paid attention to it a long time and uh -huh. they spoiled on me. It and see, the really thing that I learned stinky. about those is that you can take that culture, pour off like three quarters of it, put in new oatmeal or whatever your media is, and it'll bounce back. I should have tried that and uh -huh. I didn't. Honestly, and I didn't was, know that until recently. And the it was one of those things like, where I opened it up and was like, oh, the smell uh -huh. is so terrible and I just yep. tossed it. Exactly know? what I did. And the person that I got mine from again is like, you, you know you can, like even if it's four months old, you can just go in there Take out, you know, they, li they love putrid of, stuff, uh -huh. yeah, and add more media back in, and in a couple of weeks you'll have a, a booming colony again. Yep. So, and then the last tank before is that just a, an eight? <sighs> that LMD? one's pretty much a hospital tank. Okay. There's some. Um, I'm surprised you actually have a hospital tank. I feel like everyone says that they have a hospital tank, but their hospital tank becomes filled with other fish that they slowly start to acquire. Uh, well, what happened, in, or what's in there right now, is I had some of the the culls from here that uh -huh. I pulled out, and we took to I took my that last fish show up we yep. had with the club and didn't get rid of some of all of them, so they got thrown back in there rather <laughs> than getting thrown back into um, the actual tank The itself. actual tank as uh -huh. well. If they're cold and they've already been moved, I'll, right. I'll leave them separate. So they're in the, quote, hospital tank for now. Gotcha. And what's the fish up there in the that corner? That is a really naughty golden wonder killie fish. <laughs> is it a singular golden <laughs> it wonder killie? It is a single, yeah. <laughs> uh, the male actually lives next, or the female rather, lives next door now. They did breed for us at one time, huh. uh, which was also totally random, laissez-faire. Right. Um, and uh, he just really, really wears out everything. I'd had him in this tank with uh -huh. the blue galeris, and he was even aggressive towards wow. the blue galeris. Is there a native from the U.S., correct? I believe they are. Okay. I know that there are some types. I don't know if okay. this type is the that. The golden, specific golden one. Right. Fish. Okay. Um, so I, I'm not an expert and don't know for sure that this is, it, it, they're so prolific and, and inexpensive, I would think that there's <laughs> something uh -huh. like that. And the last thing that we have down here is actually over on your desk, correct? Yes. And that's just a little 14-gallon uh, nano cube, uh, one of those uh, Petco 50% uh, off sales. Uh -huh. So, man, you can't pass it up for that for no. that price. And it has um, some elastoma also in there, the, uh -huh. the Gilbert T. There's just one pair, a uh -huh. male and a female that I pulled aside. Uh -huh. And then there's also some blue 
uh, tiger shrimp, some orange eye tiger, and okay. the, You're not finding, <laughs> yeah, finding them is just so difficult. It's like a where's Waldo. It is. It a, really is. Uh, you don't ever see the bodies. You just catch the orange eyes sometimes, uh-huh. and I'm not uh-huh. seeing any. <laughs> yeah, I'll be I'll be very interested to see if the uh, Gibberti spawn spawn in here first, or if they spawn over in your uh, other tank over here first. I, I would assume that this pair probably gets more more food, food because yeah. they're both being fed on a regular basis. Right. But of course, these guys have no competition right. at they, all. And they can also eat all the live food that's in there yes. that isn't... Yeah, because I assume yeah, that they, if yeah. there's planaria, there's, mm-hmm. there's, uh, you've got you know some kind of protozoa or something right. like that going on in there. Um, and they'll, they'll hunt all of that little stuff down, no yeah. problem whatsoever. Some kind of little amoeba or i don't know what it is you know it's yeah. just micro life going on in there one of the really cool things that brandon has here that's a very nifty invention of his is the way that he gets rid of duckweed because <laughs> as you have in here you can see there is duckweed in here which uh, is the bane of uh, most people's existence but mm-hmm. he's come up with a pretty clever way to capture the duckweed so if you want to show us sure what your uh, clever I, contraption invention is to I collect know it i can really take credit for it um the first time i saw Something that gave me the idea uh-huh. was somebody had taken a, uh, a wave maker unit uh-huh. and similar thing, had put it on a basket with some mesh uh-huh. and used that. And so I was like, well, I don't, I don't have a, a wave maker unit, <laughs> but I had a bunch of these little, um, actually you can see one here, that's just like, almost like little, little circulation pumps. pumps. Yeah. Um, little cheap things. I, I think yeah. I got two of them for six bucks off of Amazon. Okay. Um, and so I put them on the top of some of the bigger tanks just to create uh, flow across the yeah. top, especially when I have uh, mm-hmm. Val or something like that that like you want you, ripply stuff. Yeah, and there. also just creates a more stagnant water if yes. you don't yeah. have anything there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're just getting surface agitation. Uh-huh. Um, so I had a couple of extra of those, and what I ended up doing was just taking a um, plastic Wendy's cup and put the pump in the bottom with a piece of hose just uh-huh. going through the bottom and then stuff filter floss on top huh. um this has been used a few times this filter <laughs> floss is probably ready to be retired but uh-huh. you can see i just, just right. kind of pack and it on the, enough to get a seal and it protects the pump from actually sucking it in and right then... well, well from getting clogged up with yeah it, otherwise yep. it just it'd get clogged immediately uh-huh. um and so you just let it fill up with water uh and flood and it, eventually the pump will catch and pull uh-huh. the, the water, water through, through. Uh, once it starts flowing like that, I'll usually take like a, a chip clip and uh-huh. kind of clip it to the side of the tank by one yeah. of these little tendrils uh-huh. and just let it hang there. Yeah, and um, it's naturally going to sur- like skim the surface it, of the water. Yeah, it's and, just a uh, surface skimmer. Yeah. And I'll let it run overnight if that tank's, you know, pretty bad. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't like fishing out duck feed and it grows so fast. <laughs> yeah. But it is good at removing nitrates uh-huh. and all that, but it does... Uh, limits light. It interferes with light getting through there. It slows uh, flow across the top, so it limits gas exchange. Uh-huh. There's good and bad with it, especially if you mm-hmm. let it get overgrown. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's a good that's way a to... Uh, very cheap uh, and clever way to get rid of uh, duckweed if you right. want to get rid of it. And don't right. have a, you don't have other fish that will eat it. Right. You always hear about people have koi or something like that. Too. Or goldfish yeah, or other things. Too. Too. Like, so, yeah, I, I always... Uh, or chickens. Or chickens, yeah. Yeah, I've heard that birds... birds it's a very high-protein plant, actually, in comparison really? to what you would think uh, as being a, a scum of the earth of us. Like, for, yeah. our, for our aquariums, it's like a, almost like a fish herpes. Like, you get in a tank, he's like, how did you get in here? Like, you need to... Get, like, I want you gone. He's like, I'm never leaving now. Well, and with this many tanks, I've got multiple kinds of fish herpes. Because <laughs> this, like you see, like, in some of the tanks has this stuff, which I, I would think most people would just call duckweed. It's, uh-huh. it's real small. Uh, I believe it's maybe duckweed minima uh-huh. is, is the... Technical the technical name. term, yeah. And then several of them have this stuff, which I've heard is called greater duck meat. Huh. And it's a fatter... It's definitely a little bit larger than the thicker, other stuff Yeah, that you thicker, had, yeah. quiltier leaves. Has a little bit of almost like a red root to it, kind of like red root floaters. Uh-huh. Huh. Um, then up top, I've got some frog bit. Uh, oh, yeah, I can see it just poking down through the uh, through But, the yeah, it just mats. It creates uh-huh. big, huge wads. And so it's like I've got a few different floaters now that... You know, they, they, they're all in their own way, yeah. some type of like <laughs> hindrance, great, but, yeah. Yeah, but also a hindrance. Do you have a problem feeding them, or is it uh, either like scooch the plants out of the way and drop the food Usually in? I don't. Um, okay. I, I kind of just, I tend to plop the food in one space, so that way it kind of saturates and pulls it through. Okay. Fair enough. And if you had one thing to say to somebody who wanted to have a system like this, like having a, a fish wall like this, what would you what would you tell them, like, like in terms of planning or trying to convince a spouse or family members to do it, like what what would you be what would be your selling point, especially in a bedroom, none, nonetheless? Yes. Uh, uh, I, what would I, you have to say to somebody like that? First thing, I have to credit my wonderful wife, right? Because uh, I, I'm sure 
the temptation was just keep buying more tanks. Uh, at some point you realize, well, I've got limited floor space uh -huh. and footprint. Yep. If I want to keep buying more tanks, I'm going to have to go vertical. Go vertical. Uh -huh. And so that's kind of what pushed that direction. Seeing Corey's video and uh -huh. thinking, oh, well, this this will work. I can do this. Yeah. Um, and then it's cheap. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Each of these are 20 gallon long. So I mean, you're talking like the dollar per gallon. So yeah. it's 20 bucks a pop. Uh -huh. These blocks are $1.47 a piece. Uh -huh. The boards are, you know, a couple bucks. It's, yeah. These are just two by fours. Um, yeah. None of the, the lumber was any kind of special treated lumber or anything. Huh. And you just uh, painted it with a normal... Um, I painted it with... I bought some uh, dark blue-gray paint to kind of match the, the, the wall behind uh -huh. it. And then mixed it with stain kills. Huh. Um, the, like the, the waterproof or water mm -hmm. resistant. It's supposed to help with mold resistance. Right. Like that. And so it did lighten the color a little bit. But in general, the idea was just to try to treat it... To give it as much protection as I could. Gotcha. Um, I, I assume that eventually I might have some uh, twisting or walking or whatever, but with as much weight as there is on top of it... Oh, it's keeping it pressed, basically. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think that it's going to be a problem for a very long time. Huh. So have a wonderful wife is the way have to have something wife. like this. And, and plan um, to go vertical if you want to do something like this. Plan to go vertical and, and pick something that, that if you do keep growing, that it's going to be inexpensive, mm -hmm. right? Because, I mean... 20 gallons, you know, 20, 20 bucks per tank and, and you know, mm. a couple that's, bucks for the rack. Yeah. And the filters those, are cheap as well in terms yes. of that. And it's like, that's, I think that's the biggest thing is if you want to have a fish room or even just a fish wall like this, that you need to start thinking about, like, you can get a fluval canister for a singular tank, or you right. can get a nice hang on back filter yes. for a singular tank. But when you start stacking that onto 11, 12, 13, 14 tanks, it's like, is this like is this really something that I can afford to do? Yeah, you can't really scale it up no, to a lot of. No, but it was something like this, like with twenty gallon tanks for twenty dollars tops. So that's like if you don't find something that's getting out of the hobby, it's like five dollars for the tanks. Just get it out of the way. Oh yeah, yeah. If you catch and, them used, sometimes uh -huh. you find them even cheaper. Yeah, uh, it would, it's probably ironic that most of them, I think, the glass lids, which are like seventeen, eighteen dollars, uh -huh. is probably the the least <laughs> price effective. Mm -hmm. Like, I, if, I'm sure I could find a DIY solution mm -hmm. that would be more. Mm -hmm. cost effective right. for the lids uh, yep. but I, I liked the nice glass ones um, a lot of if a lot of people do uh, acrylic panels uh -huh. like you can get lots of things that are meant for diffuse lighting mm -hmm. and things like that or polycarbonate for greenhouses yes that's another uh, good one that I use those, anything with any kind of plastic uh, material it's been my experience that over time they'll eventually start to sag mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they're just going to absorb moisture yep. and, and get heavy and you're going to have to have more bracing more support to yep. keep them from, from deforming Awesome. Uh, so I like the glass, uh, even though it's a little bit of a, an expense. Uh, that was that was the splurge on it, right? When, when, the, when the lid is as much as the tank, but still, yeah, yeah. Everything else in them was was pretty cheap. Like you said, yeah. all the, the plants just got moved from one tank to the next. And then so all of that soon was, you have an entire room of plants, and it's not. It's like I paid five bucks for the pearl weed once, and bada bing, bada boom, it's right. in all the tanks. So yeah, if people from the channel come through Frankfurt, just stop by uh -huh. and get your free plants. Yeah, <laughs> we we. we uh, we, 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 we make plants here. Yes, we make lots of plants. <laughs> well, thank you, Brandon, for showing us around your, uh, your fish room, fish wall today. It's been a, a sure. pleasure. Uh, and if you guys that are watching this have any questions, just let me know and uh, leave them down in the comments, and we'll see if uh, either I or Brandon can't answer them about some of the different killifish or where he got them or anything like that or different guppies of where he sourced them. Um, and with that, I hope you guys have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. See you guys.